Here we're going to survey the various types of functional groups in which the carbonyl group finds itself. And I would encourage you to try to commit these functional group names to memory. It's just going to be helpful as you're reading and learning about carbonyl compounds to have good facility with these names of the functional groups and an ability to recognize them. And there are two important classes here, and, and they're the first two bullet points. There's also a third class, which is going to be less important to us in terms of reactivity, but also has great practical importance because these show up in a lot of different places. So the first two classes are ketones and aldehydes and carboxylic acid derivatives, or just plain carboxylic acids. Ketones and aldehydes, what I collectively call the ketohydes contain R groups or hydrogens linked to the carbonyl carbon. And here R is meant to refer to a hydrocarbon group. This could be alkyl, alkenyl, alkynyl, or aryl. These are all considered ketones or aldehydes. And the difference between a ketone and an aldehyde is that the aldehyde has one or two hydrogens linked to the carbonyl carbon. When two hydrogens are linked to the carbonyl carbon, that's formaldehyde. When we have just one, that is some other aldehyde. In a ketone, we've got two hydrocarbon groups linked to the carbonyl carbon. Now, one point of nomenclature here that I want to point out, because you may hear me use this term in the future, this group, this CHO group that represents the aldehyde is known as a formal group. So you may hear it referred to as an aldehyde group or formal. This is the CHO group. And this is how we abbreviate an aldehyde with CHO to indicate that the O is doubly bonded to the carbon and the H is also bonded to the carbonyl carbon. That's why it has this kind of funky appearance of CHO in the abbreviation. Now, carboxylic acids contain a hydroxyl group linked to the carbonyl carbon along with some other R group. And when we replace that OH group with another heteroatomic group, such as a nitrogen group, an alkoxy, a chlorine, even a phosphate, we get what's called a carboxylic acid derivatives. And these are all characterized by lone pairs on the heteroatom linked to the carbonyl carbon. So each of these groups, if you look at it kind of in isolation, looks like what we've previously called a resonance electron donating group, right? It's a heteroatom with only single bonds with a lone pair that can be donated to the carbonyl carbon. And this is key to carboxylic acid derivatives. The reason I included acyl phosphates here is these have great practical importance in biochemistry. 1,3-phosphoglycerate is a compound that shows up in glycolysis, and it is an acyl phosphate with a phosphate group linked to the carbonyl carbon. One thing that the acyl phosphate and acyl chloride really make clear is that this group attached to the carbonyl carbon has the potential to act as a leaving group or nucleophage, it kind of wants to depart and take a pair of electrons with it, especially in the case of the acyl chloride. This is an important general pattern for the reactivity of carboxylic acid derivatives. What if we have two heteroatoms linked to the carbonyl carbon? Well, in that case, we've got a derivative of carbonic acid, H2CO3, which is this compound right here. If we replace one or both of those OH groups with some other heteroatomic group, so that we've got two heteroatomic groups linked to the carbonyl carbon, that's a carbonic acid derivative. Ureas are a very important class with two nitrogen groups linked to the carbonyl carbon. Carbamates have a nitrogen group and an alkoxy group, and carbonates have two alkoxy groups linked to the carbonyl carbon. We'll see these less in reactions, but they do have great practical importance. For example, polycarbonates are a very important class of polymers. This slide contrasts the two most important classes of carbonyl containing functional groups. What we might call class one is the ketohydes, ketones and aldehydes. These compounds lack a leaving group, lack a viable leaving group linked to the carbonyl carbon because all they have are carbons or hydrogens linked to the carbonyl carbon. And these are not gonna depart with a pair of electrons to form, for example, H minus or Cr3 minus. And we divide them up further into ketones and aldehydes. And these are good electrophiles at the carbonyl carbon for the reasons we've already discussed. There's significant partial positive charge at that carbonyl carbon and a great alternative resonance form with positive formal charge on the carbonyl carbon. And so these can undergo reaction with nucleophiles in which a nucleophile adds to the carbonyl carbon. And we end up with something that contains a new hydroxyl group derived from the carbonyl oxygen. And this is an addition process where the elements of H nu have added to the carbonyl group. Generally, aldehydes are more reactive than comparable ketones for two reasons. The first is steric. 
the very small H doesn't provide a lot of steric hindrance to the carbonyl carbon, so the aldehyde carbonyl carbon is more sterically accessible than the ketone carbonyl carbon. But induction also plays a role. Since alkyl groups are inductively electron donating, this tends to stabilize the carbonyl carbon and diminish the partial positive charge at the carbonyl carbon, making it less electrophilic. So generally, aldehydes are slightly more reactive than comparable ketones. Class II are the carboxylic acid derivatives, and these compounds are characterized by a potential leaving group. It may not be a great leaving group, but a potential leaving group in the heteroatomic group linked to the carbonyl carbon. And a great example highlighting the potential of the heteroatomic group to act as a leaving group is in the acyl chloride in which chlorine is connected to an acyl group. Now here, I do want to back up and just highlight the acyl group as an important point of nomenclature. An acyl group is a carbonyl group linked to a hydrocarbon group, or H. So this R is a hydrocarbon group, or H. This carbonyl group is just a plain vanilla carbonyl group. Collectively, this is called an acyl group. So an acyl chloride has a chlorine linked to an acyl group. And that chlorine is a great leaving group. So what can happen at the carbonyl carbon is nucleophilic substitution. A nucleophile can displace chloride. This does not involve an SN2 mechanism, as we'll explore in an upcoming unit. But it shows the typical reactivity of carboxylic acid derivatives. All of these carboxylic acid derivatives can engage in this kind of reactivity. The extent to which they do depends on the quality of the leaving group. For example, Amides have a terrible leaving group and N minus there, and so it's rather hard to get them to engage in this kind of reactivity, but we can make it happen under forcing conditions, as we'll see. For now, I just want you to notice the general pattern here, that nucleophilic substitution is the typical reaction of carboxylic acid derivatives.